these accidents occurred within USAFE. There are minor accidents and major accidents. And some leave the aircraft in one piece, some in pieces. Others just leave a hole in the ground. You can have accidents in any kind of aircraft. Almost $17 million. That was the cost of major aircraft accidents in USAFE alone during a single year. That $17 million represents only the cost of the aircraft after deducting depreciation and does not include the bills for personal injuries and property damage. Lives? Who can calculate them in dollars? More than 58% of all aircraft accidents in USAFE are attributed to pilot error. The truth is that you, the pilot, can create or fail to prevent a situation that can cost your life. Flying safety records indicate that the fellows who wind up on the Forms 14 are not always the victims of a single drastic mistake. More often than not, the cause is an accumulation of seemingly minor errors. Most of you pilots are good at your jobs. You've had the best training. You've got good equipment. But it's the little things that catch you. Just like they almost caught this pilot. Like a lot of other pilots, he thought that flying safety was personal, just between him and his plane. He slept through flying safety talks, or he let his mind drift. But he was converted. He became a believer, but fast. Yeah, I buy it now, but my frau almost collected on that fat insurance policy before I saw the light. It happened on one of those routine boondoggles. Yesterday, I flew down here to Alpha from Bravo Air Base and RON. Hiya, Pop, mommy. Should have left here a few hours ago, but I was partying last night, and... <clears throat> yeah, you know how that goes. A little oxygen will knock this in the head. Don't no kid me. That was you at the Wah Oh, no, it sir. wasn't, boy. Morning, sir. Now, you got a clearance for him? Going on a jet flight? Yeah. Here you are. Thanks a lot. Want a local map? Well, okay. Paperwork, paperwork, reams of it. Sixteen copies to the devil himself, with an info copy to every head shrinker in the puzzle palace. And all this junk for a simple little flight. There's no sweat on this one. And I can do it standing on my head. Now, like they say, you can't fight City Hall. Frequencies, frequencies. Yeah, I know what Bravo Beacon is. Well, now to get my weather. Yeah, I better check the notums first. Boy! Yeah, I just left Bravo yesterday. Nothing could have changed in that time. Seems to be okay here. Cold front moving down. Hi there. May I help you, sir? Uh, no, thanks. I've been checking on weather for years. Well, okay. That's all I'd need. A lecture on climatology. Now, well, Bravo is still VFR. I'm okay. Oh, 
the old dog's in good shape. Everything checks out okay. I have a full service job, except for the oxygen supply, but that's just what I ask for. I'll have enough for this hop even after I take care of that hangover. I've got to report that lousy cabin pressure seal. Thanks. I have plenty of fuel, full internal load, and 50 gallons in each drop. The contest is ready to start. while I taxi. Clear for takeoff, winds 260 degrees at 1-4, over. Roger, rolling. Check to ground control. Railroad, this is Air Force Jet 24129. Air Force 24129, this is Railroad. Over Buckshot at 12153000. Victor Fox, Alpha to Bravo. Estimating Bravo at 40 past the hour. Roger, 129, out. What's wrong with me? Must be that hangover again. Toot forgot the blasted oxygen. I gotta get this frapping thing off and get out in a hurry. Turn off that hundred percent. Well, it's over. I'm okay now. I've got to watch that fuel, though. This can is really gulping it down at this altitude. Yeah, I better tune in the bird dog about now. Now let's see. Bravo Beacon is three two seven. Whoops! I can't take much of that. Hangover's back. Now yeah, that's better. Must be off a little. Wonder why I had to make a right drift correction. Must be a pretty strong crosswind. I better get a steer. A practice steer, that's all I need. Bravo DF from 24129. Request practice steer to base. Air 
Roger, 24129, steer the base with zero winds, zero nine zero degrees. Zero nine zero. Oh, there must be some mistake. I have your beacon right on the nose, and you give me a steer of zero nine zero. Request you check that steer. Uh, Roger, one two nine. Transmit for another steer. Roger, 129er. We have a class alpha steer. Your last transmission indicates so your steer is 092 degrees magnetic. Over. But how can that be? I'm bird dog right on the money at 327 KCs. You must have made a mistake. Oh, 129. For your information, Bravo Beacon has been changed from 327 KCs to 205 KCs. The notification of this change was distributed yesterday in all bases in a notum. You must have 326 KCs, the frequency from the Dora Beacon, 60 miles northwest of Bravo. The Notums. Roger, Bravo Control. 0129, your last transmission indicates your steer is now 095. your current weather. Oh, 129 at the latest sequence time, 1200 zebra. Bravo Air Base, 200 feet, 4 tenths. Light rain, wind 0, 070 0 degrees at 4 knots. Altimeter 29907. Roger. Uh, the weather to your pitched Nia curve. They had the front 50 miles north of Bravo. Unless I was looking at an old weather map. I should have read the sequences. It wouldn't have taken long. Bravo Tower from 129. What are the GCA minimums for your base? Oh, 129. The GCA minimums for Bravo are 300 and 1 mile. Well, I can't hack that. It's below minimums. What's the nearest alternate? Oh, 129. Closest alternate is Coco Air Base. Their last report was 4,000 broken at five miles. Roger, we'll proceed to Coco. Will you make a check on the current weather there? That's about 40 miles from my present position. I don't have much fuel left. Uh, Roger, 129er. Things are beginning to pile up on me. First the oxygen runs out, and then Bravo's socked in. Now it'll be tied on fuel to Coco. I sure bought myself a lot of trouble. And if I just had some oxygen, I could have stayed at altitude and cut down my fuel consumption. Air Force 129, this is Bravo Tower. Go ahead, Bravo. Coco reports the weather unchanged. 4,000 broken at five miles. Roger. I better get under this cotton picking stuff while I can. FR have field in sight. Request landing instructions. I have 450 pounds. Roger, 129, land runway 26, call on the break. Roger. still appears to be up. Roger, twist to one, three. 
Crash, we have an 86 number 24129er in the pattern. He's at minimum fuel and can't get his gear down. This can is soon. It's going to be close. One two nine. This is Caravan. Try your emergency gear system. I already tried it. Did you pull it full out? Tower, gear down. Final. business today. He made it. One, two, nine, and clear for the right turn off. Taxi to hide stand south side. Well, that contest is over. Flamed out, request the tow. Roger. Let's go, boy. We've got to pick up a cold one. Some of you may be thinking that this pilot should have augured in. Some of you may be saying, well, this is a motion picture. These things just don't happen in real life. Things like excessive drinking, lack of sleep before a flight, failure to check the notums, not knowing that the frequency of the destination had been changed, miscalculation of the weather, not listening to the weather officer, and not checking the sequences not remembering to conserve the oxygen supply when there's a faulty cabin pressure seal, improper operation of the emergency gear system. Yes, you're right. This pilot probably would have clobbered. But you're wrong if you think these mistakes just don't happen. They have happened, time and time again. And when errors of this nature pile up on you, they comprise a lethal weapon. And through the magic of the motion picture, this pilot survived. But how about you? In your flying, do you depend upon magic, luck, or safe flying? Mm -hmm.